Okay, so um, I'm actually uh, looking at interdisciplinary collaborations as such, which perfectly fits with the day. Um, and I spent some time working on the ideas and I'll give you a, a bit of a background how I ended up where I am and what it is that we're looking at or I'm looking at. And what does it lead to in terms of questions maybe for the future? Um, so very quickly, um, when I was uh, looking for a job at the same time, Strathclyde University got something that translates to about 1.2 million New Zealand dollars for three years to spend on facilitating interdisciplinary um, research, which is great. Loads of money, three years, let's do it. Till somebody who later employed me asked them a critical question. What do we meet, mean and what do we want to actually achieve? Put quite a few people in a spot when they thought, oh, we don't know, now what? Now this is where my job was created at that time and PhD that came out of it. And I spent about 20 months um, researching but also assisting the board, following different groups of people doing interdisciplinary research, different initiatives, tweaking, poking, changing, trying to learn what it is and what actually matters in the long term. But also, of course, to um, supply some data for the board that could then show to the founder that, yes, we achieved we facilitated it, whatever it was that we were to facilitate. And that led us to the first question, what and how do we define interdisciplinarity or disciplines? Um, it's a bit of a background. We, or I took a perspective that comes originally from sociology, the practice perspective. In the crudest possible way, and I hope nobody from the field, from the field is here who could later um, tell me what I've done, practice us really explains what legitimate in terms of who we are, what we do, but also how we learn. All about situated learning, relational learning, um, and being part of a community of practice. Yep. So this is the crudest way to explain the perspective, but that also means it gives us a very neat and w a nice way to explain the disciplines, first of all. They are communities, they are tribes. A bit like cultures that fight with each other quite often. Languages, systems of values, the way you approach things, the way you do things for the reason you do them. Yeah? The things that are legitimate in your discipline basically define who you are as a scientist or researcher. But that also means uh, or leads to the a point that communities are quite often incongruent. Yeah? Different methodologies, different languages, different systems of values don't go together. Which led us to another question. I'm almost stealing this idea of question, which leads you to another question, to another question. Um, what is it then in terms of interdisciplinarity? Does it mean there is another practice that can be termed as interdisciplinary? And if so, what is it? Fortunately, the answer was, or at least we think, yes. And we ended up um, with summarizing and describing some of the, the practices and interdisciplinarity as actually a set of complex practices that stack on each other. We grouped them at that time for uh, practices inquiry, engagement, enactment. There's a number of, of, of different ways to um, group them, of course. I'm not saying this is the only way to think about it. Um, and some interesting examples would be, for example, upframing. And the Alan's presentation was a perfect example of that. Yeah, the way he presented was very engaging for everyone. It didn't matter which discipline you came from. Yeah? The same for the problem. So uh, one of the best examples we had was a NASA guy comes to one of the workshop and instead of saying, well, we need to transport 50 Marines from uh, base A to base B and it needs to be done, blah, blah, blah. He just said, any ideas that can help us to get a number of people from A to B. And we got musicians coming into this session because they thought they've got a solution and they had some good ideas. The other one, which is really interesting and we saw with some established professors was asking stupid questions. Sitting there, knowing the answer, but just clarifying for others. And you probably all know that pain from the uh, lecture room. Jesus, these lies are terrible. I can't see anyone. Um, when students don't get it, but don't ask a question. Yeah? But we do the same. And the bigger the ego of the professor, the more often they didn't ask the questions. I'm not going to show. I don't know. Um, those were the practices that they were developing as we talked or we, we worked with the groups and we started writing about them. The second interesting um, idea that came out of it is the emergence, emergence of community 
multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary communities. This guy started working across boundaries, knowing each other, connecting to each other. Um, there was also a shift in the way we started thinking about in the university about interdisciplinary research. Is it about solving a particular problem when we can gather disciplines and scientists, solve the problem, go back home, or is it about longevity? Was the project about achieving actually long-term collaborations, not necessarily one problem, but thinking in interdisciplinary ways? Different types of support, different type of initiatives. Um, is it about borrowing or co-creating? Do I take your idea and just apply it, or do we actually sit down and spend long, long time trying to develop something together? Some interesting implications, I'm gonna only give uh, a few examples. Less money was better. The more money we put on the table for initiative, out of the 600,000 pounds, the worse the group was. It attracted some of people who were not really interested in collaboration, but money. Less money was better for nurturing, spending time up front, putting different type of resource when people could glue. We also had a lot of, of dating, speed dating, and we called it pre-marriage dating, when we spent time with groups making sure they clicked and they develop the practices so we know they're not gonna fall apart halfway through or they're not connected for three years like bad marriage. That's the project. Side effect, we developed the number of reviewers and champions for the discipline. So they were then reviewing the different projects because they knew how to approach it. Disciplinary OIDR experts, they weren't the same. It wasn't the star scientist quite often who would engage it was somebody else who probably wasn't as accomplished as his colleagues in the partner, but was much better at translating the knowledge and bringing different streams. Implications, promotion. The university changed at some point the way they did APR and enabled them to get promoted. Of course, it's still the question, what do you do in the global discipline itself? And finally, we developed a number of courses which are still going, so PhD level course, 10 credits. Um, which we ran for three days with all the scientists, just talking through and explaining what practices are, um, and stressing some of the reflexivity. I will just finish here because the time is up, but there are still questions that come and ideas that could be explored, and one of them we just started talking about is, is there a space for a board game to actually teach and engage students to get to the problems in Corona IDR? Thank you. <laughs>